Greetings everyone, Benner from The Virtual Economist, and welcome to the second episode in my unusual trading guide, focused specifically on how to negotiate. Now, as I just alluded, this is not actually a standalone video. There is a first episode to this, so if you haven't seen it already, I would definitely recommend watching it first, as it should give you a lot more context for what I'm going to be talking about here. Anyway, in the first episode, I talked more about the general theory of negotiating, giving a broad set of guidelines that should help you approach any type of trade. Now, in this episode, we're going to get into the specifics, where I'm essentially going to show you guys how to apply what you learned in the last video. Thus, to start things off, I'm going to go ahead and give two concrete examples of negotiating, one for buying a quick sell and yet another for making an advantageous unusual offer. Then I will also go over 20 miscellaneous yet important tips that really just didn't fit anywhere in the first video. Alright, so without further ado, let's get right on into it. First, let's take a look at a quick sell offer. Let's assume that you have 20 keys and you see someone on a trade server who is quick selling a Neutron Star Bonk Leadware for 16 keys. Let's assume that the other trader has only the bunk leadware and just a few other keys in their backpack, so it's safe to say that they are pretty new to unusual trading. Just like any other unusual, you should go through the pros and the cons of the leadware to determine the tier level. For positives, the hat is for Scout, and let's go ahead and assume that it is clean. For negatives, the hat is Robo, and honestly, Neutron Star is not the most in-demand effect. All in all, the hat isn't really that great, but it honestly isn't that bad either. The way I see it, 16 isn't really a good deal, but anything more than 25% off should be a deal worth taking, so I'll go ahead and note that 25% off, or 15 keys, is really the highest that I would be willing to go. Of course, since 15 is less than 16, you're going to need to go ahead and get them to go lower. In this kind of situation, I would typically just say hello and go ahead and ask them right off the bat if their price is firm and whether they can maybe go a little bit lower than 16 keys. Let's assume that they say something like maybe, but not a ton. Now, just like I talked about in the last episode, you should not offer 15 keys, even if it looks like they would easily take it. Remember, you want your first offer to be much better than that. Since this person already had a decent discount, even though they are new, I really wouldn't anticipate them calling me a lowballer if I countered with something quite a bit lower, so I would go ahead and throw out 13. Now, as you would expect, let's assume that this person says nah, that that is too low. However, they counter with 15, which is exactly what you're willing to do. Now, should you just go ahead and accept the offer? Well, nope, you should not. In this situation, I would say something like, why don't we meet in the middle at 14? After all, you should always give your training partner the option to go to the lowest offer possible. Typically, I would expect them to say something like, eh, that is just a little bit too low, I'm not sure. Now, if they're even a little bit unsure about their offer, I would go ahead and mention that the bonk leadware is a robo hat, and that Halloween 2016 effects are really not the easiest to sell. While it isn't always this simple, let's go ahead and assume that that convinces him and he says he can do 14. Perfect, just go ahead and chuck the keys into the trade window and accept the trade since you got a much better offer than you expected and snatched up the hat for 30% off. Now let's take a look at an unusual offer. Let's assume that you are on a trade server and you happen to see someone taking offers on a green Energy Z goggles which is priced at 36 keys. You happen to have three pretty bad unusuals, a 36 key Mega Strike Biolife, a 38.5 key Purple Confetti Cotton Head, and another 38.5 key Vivid Plasma Ground Control. If you're like me, you should look at the Green Energy Z goggles and think, holy crap, that is an extremely good unusual. Green Energy is honestly one of the best selling effects, and it is super inexpensive at only 36 keys on an alright looking Medicat. Going just off tier level, I would value it much better than the three unusuals that you have, so you should definitely trade this guy right on up. Now, your first offer should always be the best for you, so I would go ahead and rank the three unusuals in terms of tier. Personally, I think the taunt is the worst, as taunts have honestly started selling quite poorly as of the 2016 Halloween update. A close second is the Cottonhead, as random all classes with just average first gen effects are also quite hard to sell. Third would be the Vivid Plasma Ground Control, which looks like quite a nice hat, but is still kinda overpriced at 38 keys. So you should offer the taunt first, then the cotton head, and third finally with the ground control. Let's assume that the other person is semi-experienced, with a roughly $500 backpack. 
Given this, it is hard to expect him to accept strict downgrades, but I also don't think it would really hurt the negotiations to start there. To be honest, I would bet you would have to overpay a few keys in the end, so I would go ahead and set a fallback point or the most you would be willing to overpay. In this case, most of your unusuals are pretty crappy compared to the Z goggles, so I would be willing to overpay a maximum of 4 keys. To start off the negotiation, I would go ahead and offer a 1 for 1 with the taunt first. He will probably decline that, so you could offer maybe adding a few keys as sweets. Let's assume that he tells you that he simply doesn't play spy, and he doesn't want the taunt. So I would go ahead and offer up the cotton head next. But let's assume that he doesn't like confetti either. At this point, I think it is worth pointing out that your trading partner currently has the leverage in the negotiations, since he doesn't really want anything that you've offered so far. Thus, you need to make offers now that are more proactive and increasingly better for him. Fortunately, as it turns out, you can do exactly that by offering the ground control. So I would go ahead and chuck the ground control up in the trade. After a little bit of back and forth, let's assume that your trading partner says that he can do the ground control if you add a key in sweets. Now, 40 keys was the maximum I was willing to pay, and 39 keys is still less than that, so I would honestly just go ahead and accept the trade. Now, this might seem a little bit weird that I'd want to overpay by 3 keys, but in this case, I do think it makes sense. While I don't think the goggles could easily sell for 36 pure, I still think they could get a pretty good pure offer, maybe around 30 to 32 keys, and could easily get a nice overpay offer of around 40 in good unusuals, where honestly I think the ground control would probably remain unsold for months or more on the classifieds. Thus, for all that reasoning, I think the trade is fully worth it. Hopefully, these two examples should have given you guys a little bit of a look into how I approach the negotiating process. Now, just like I talked about at the start of the video, it is time to get into the 20 miscellaneous tips and tricks that I have for negotiating. Number 1. You have a huge advantage when you receive the first offer. Remember how I said learning about your trading partner was one of the most important and overlooked aspects of negotiating? Well, receiving the first offer gives you a stupid amount of new information about your trading partner that you can then use to your advantage later in the negotiating process. This information can include raw experience, but it can also let you know what kind of items your trading partner is willing to trade and what classes they want items for. In addition, receiving the first offer almost always guarantees that your trading partner wants your items more than you want theirs, so you can go ahead and play hardball from the beginning. Number 2. Even though I literally just said it is better to receive offers, initiate trades yourself. After all, even if you start off the trade from a disadvantage, it is much better than never negotiating at all. Number 3. See how much somebody paid for an unusual. This is probably one of the best bargaining chips out there. If you know how much they paid for their hat, you know exactly how much will make them profit and what will be a massive lowball that wastes their time. Just click on the history of an item to see the date that they traded it on, and make a compare link for that day and the day before. Of course, if there are a lot of random items, you need to view as many histories as you can to try to find a match. Number 4. If your trading partner doesn't believe you the first few times, they never will. Oftentimes, you will come across people that believe blatantly incorrect things about the TF2 economy, which will attempt to put a wrench in any reasonable offer that you want to make. While it sucks to come across these people, you want to be negotiating about the deal, not about who is right or wrong, and starting a flame war about tier levels will seldom convince them. Number 5. Be kind and genuine throughout the entire negotiating process. Just like I talked about before, you would be surprised how many trades you can get just by being nice. However, in addition, I found that cracking trading related jokes or using smiley faces in the chat helps just as much as it will make you seem like more of a real person and not just a rude profit monger. Sure, you might get frustrated when your trading partner makes false claims, but you should never let that get in the way of being kind. Honestly, the only time when you should ever let yourself get mad in the chat is when you know 100% that your trading partner has nothing, and I mean absolutely nothing to offer, and even in that case, it's not really the nicest thing to do. Number 6. Don't make it obvious how much you really want an item. Now, if you saw the first part, this should be pretty self-obvious. If you act like you really, really want the unusual, then your trading partner will quickly realize that you want it far more than they do, and they will start to play hardball in the negotiating process. Essentially, you're just going to get yourself a terrible trade by acting like that, so never tell your trading partner that it is your dream unusual or anything like that. If you do that, you're basically going to screw yourself over. Number 7. Sweets are the perfect trade fillers. If you need an offer of a key or two more to appease your partner, then just add some miscellaneous items in your backpack. If you give them items for classes that they play, it will make them more inclined to accept, and it can also be a great way to get rid of cancerous bot killers with 50,000 strange parts. Number 8. Overpay is the bread and butter of negotiation. 
If you see a hat that is better than your hat, appease the profit trader inside everyone by offering your hat with a key or two overpay. This is by far the best way to get rid of bad unusuals and it honestly works like a charm. Number 9. If someone offers you an insane deal right off the bat, skip the negotiations. Move to accepting it as fast as you can before they have the time to second guess themselves. Number 10. Never trust people who say that they need a day or two to decide about an offer. Almost 99% of the time, if they can make the trade right here right now and they want to wait, they basically mean no. Thus, just tell these people that it is, quote, your policy that trades be made at the time that they are discussed. To convince them of this, you could even cite the literally 50 billion cases of when people backed out on you after doing exactly this. Number 11. Never accept incoming trade offers on Steam without treating them as if you were negotiating live. Look up the offer's backpack and see if they can add anything to make the offer any better. If it looks like they can, just go ahead and add them to discuss. This can even be used when someone sends a lowball offer, as they might be willing to make it a real offer if you just add them to talk about it. Just keep in mind that these people will probably think that their offer was good, so I would recommend asking for their permission before telling them how bad their offer really was, so that they are braced for the news and therefore less likely to object to everything you say. Number 12. Don't talk in absolutes. Unfortunately, you never know when you might offend someone after making a common observation, so the best way around this is to never make absolute, all-encompassing claims. For example, if you say something like, your hat is heavy so it might make it harder to sell, or my hat will probably get better offers than yours, you're not only going to reduce the chance of your trading partner getting mad at you, but it will also allow you to say things that might not be 100% accurate without looking like a blatant sharker. Number 13. Don't bring up anything negative unless you're forced to do so. Yes, even if your hat is duped, there is really no need to tell them unless they ask. To be honest, I might sound overly pretentious by saying this, but if they can't find your Steam community URL and put it into backpack.tf, then they really deserve to unknowingly trade for a dupe. Number 14. Use old stereotypes to your advantage. Anymore, a hat being first gen does not instantly make it better than any second or third gen hat, nor does a hat being all class make it easier to sell. While you might know this, it is still a free negotiating chip as many other people still believe it. Number 15. Make offers that appeal to the trading strategy of your partner. Now if you are confused as to what I mean by this, here is a good example. Say you are looking to sell two very bad 40 key hats, and you see someone who wants to downgrade their decent 80 key hat. In this case, you should always go ahead and offer up your two 40 key hats, since you have a much higher chance of getting a 2 for 1 trade. Sure, downgrading is much better for your trading partner, but it would also allow you to get out of two hard to sell hats at the same time, which is also not too shabby. Number 16. If you trade someone up first and have a number of unusuals, a cool technique you can use is to put any you are willing to sell in the trade window, and then to ask your trading partner to pick the ones they like. This way, you can make a first offer with a hat that interests them, and essentially get the knowledge benefits of making the second offer, while also not angering them by asking them to make the first offer when you initiated the trade. It's basically just a win-win. Number 17. If your trading partner wants pure only, tell them that you would only buy their hat if they quick sell it. As you should know by now, if you are in the game to make profit, you should never buy an unusual for full price in pure. However, there are some people that just really, really, really want pure, and if you just explain to them that you cannot buy their hat unless they quick sell it, you would be surprised how many people can offer you a great deal out of nowhere. Number 18. Use current sellers and previous price suggestions to convince your trading partner of an unusual's tier. Honestly, it amazes me how few people seem to click on the stats button of an unusual, despite how much information it can offer. For example, if you click stats on your partner's unusual, and see that there are two sellers for 10 keys less than its backpack.tf price, you could argue that it must be much worse than the current price suggests. Or, on the other hand, if the price suggestion on your hat says that it recently sold for pure, you can argue that it must be very good. Number 19. Don't be afraid to cancel the trade if it just isn't working. While it may make negotiations sound easy, don't be upset if you can't get a trade. Like I talked about in the first episode, sometimes people are just not willing to offer something that is good for you, and I think some of the best traders are the ones that know when to drop out of negotiations if they are just not getting anywhere. And finally, number 20. Your trading partner's lowest they can go is simply not the lowest they can go. See if they can go lower anyway. Anyway, that is just about going to do it for the video. While I did just talk about 20 whole tips, I'm sure I did miss a thing or two, so feel free to share any negotiating tips and tricks you may have down in the comment section below. I hope you guys really did enjoy the video and maybe learned a thing or two about how to negotiate just a little bit better. As always, if you have any questions about the video or just trading in general, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. Until next time guys, thanks for watching.